Hey everybody, uh, my name is Jessica Perina, and today I'm going to be talking to you about something I think is incredibly powerful. Um, and that thing is data. Right? Good data can help individuals and companies make better decisions. It helps guide governmental policy around the world. Uh, and it can make complex trends or topics clear and understandable. Specifically, I'm going to talk to you guys about how to harness data using D3. Because the problem with data is that it usually looks like this. Um, that's not easy to understand. So how do we transform a dense, dull text file into an interactive, interesting, informative visualization? So that's where D3 comes in. So I'm going to be talking to you about the what and the why of D3, and then going over how you can actually get started making some data visually appealing. So what is D3? Um, it's just a JavaScript library, although it is quite massive, and it is there to help you make the visualization of your dreams. It was created by Mike Bostock and some of his colleagues while they were at Stanford, and it stands for Data Driven Documents, hence D3. So the strength of D3 is that it does a great job of manipulating those data driven documents uh, in a really efficient manner using the web standards that we all know and love, or love to hate, depending on your opinion. Um, and it is actively managed by Mike Bostock on GitHub. He's updating it all the time and adding in great new features and libraries. So why would you want to use D3? Um, increasingly, companies are relying on more data-driven decisions. So being able to sort through that data and make it clear and understandable and digestible is more important than it's ever been. And as you saw with uh, that Fitbit data I showed, Data doesn't really tell any sort of a story. That's up to you. D3 helps you tell that story clearly, quickly, and easily, because it's really hard to get what you want done if you don't have the right tools. So pretty much, you just tell D3 what you want it to do, and that's what it's going to do. It's declarative. Um, it's also data bound, which means that once you've set it up, as your data changes, your visualization is going to change, and you're not actually going to need to do anything beyond that. It works using SVGs, so you get the advantages of something that is scalable, resolution independent, um, and search option, search engine friendly. And it makes making things interactive really easy, and I personally love interactive data visualizations. Um, so these are some examples of things that have been made using D3. So you've got a difference chart. This one's for temperature, but you might also see it on a website like E-Trade or some sort of finance thing. If anybody has used the amazing software Daisy Disk, they use this kind of visualization to show your hard drive and how much space files and folders are taking up. Maps are probably the clearest use case for a visualization. Uh, this one comes from The Guardian, and it's showcasing Alaskan communities that are at risk from climate change, and it's interactive. Uh, these liquid fuel gauges are probably not what you think of when you think of data visualizations, but this is the kind of stuff you can do with D3. Um, and if I had a live version of this, that liquid actually moves, and when you load it up, they fill. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, if you have data, you can visualize it in interesting ways. This last image is from the Washington Post, and I don't know much about baseball, but I can totally understand this. It is like pitches that have been thrown to and hit by uh, Bryce Harper, who apparently has the perfect baseball swing. So how does D3 work? The central principle of D3 is that it's designed to use uh, CS style selectors to make its node selections. Once you've made those selections, you can use operators to manipulate them in a fashion that's very similar to jQuery. Right? After you've got that, you just want to make it depend on some data. And definitely utilize additional libraries, because they abstract away some of the complexity, and they're going to save you a lot of work. So I'm going to show you two quick demos for how you can utilize D3. I'm going to show you some data-bound circles, and then we're going to get into that map that's on the left a little bit. I'm not going to talk about the donut chart much, but if you have questions, I'll be happy to uh, talk to you about it later. So. Right, I've got this really blank, boring page, and we are going to turn this into something interesting. All right. So the first thing I'm going to need to do, and I'm going to do some drag and drop coding to save you guys from having to watch me live type. I need some data. All right, so I've got some truly arbitrary data uh, 
countries attached to numbers and things that don't mean anything. It's just there so that we can get some variety in the circles that we'll eventually see. After we've got our data, we're going to create our SVG container. And this is what's going to actually hold our visualization. So I'm naming the SVG, and I'm using d3.select. And I'm selecting uh, the div with the ID example from my HTML page. And you can see that this is a very basic HTML page. Just what four divs, and then I've got some script tags. For clarity, I put the scripts in the bottom so you guys can see that I'm pulling in D3's library, uh, as well as the additional libraries for TopoJSON and data maps, which you'll see in the map example. All right, so I'm attaching my SVG to example, and then I'm going to actually append a D3 SVG element. That's going to be the thing that holds our visualization. And I'm just going to set some height and width and background color. An interesting thing to note is that in jQuery, if you were to do the selecting of a div and then append more stuff after it, what actually would get returned is the original selection so that you can keep appending stuff. D3 works a little bit differently in that when I append this SVG, everything afterwards is actually to that SVG. So that as you append things, everything's being added to the last thing you appended. All right, so now we have some data. We have a container. And this is going to look like a bunch, but I will walk you through it. So we have the SVG that I created. And then I'm going to say select all circle, which is weird because there are no circles anywhere. But we'll get to that in a second. All right, after I've selected my non-existent so far circles, I'm going to bind my arbitrary data to my visualization. And then I'm going to use this enter method. I'll stretch this out a little bit so you guys can see it a little bit better. All right, and enter is kind of where the magic happens with D3. That method is basically saying for every row in the data, what comes next is what I want you to do. And what I'm telling it to do is to append a circle to my SVG and set its attributes, its x and y axis, its radius, its color, based on the data that it was linked to. After that, I'm just adding on a little uh, title to every circle so that if your mouse hovers over it, you can see the name that's attached to it. And from that, if we refresh our page, we get that. Um, so I can do a little hover, you can see some names, move this more centered. What's nice about this is once I have it set up, if my data were to change, you know, let's say the population explodes, your visualization changes. You don't actually have to do anything uh, to make that happen. So if you have continually updating data, D3 has you taken care of. So that's an example of some basic things you can do with D3, but they're not com particularly compelling or visually interesting. So we're going to do a map. And I'm going to show you how that is actually, in some ways, a lot easier. So, um, this is a map. It's based on some census data from 2010 uh, on median, median state income. So you can hover over each state and see its name and its median income. So I'm not going to drag and drop code this, but I am going to walk you guys through what I did. So on this one, I'm using the CSV method to bring in an external CSV file, which looks like this. I did not use all of the data in this file. I just pulled out the state and the median income. That's all I needed. So then I'm going to take that data that I pulled out, and I'm going to use it to do something interesting. Line 7, I'm using D3 to select the body tag to, uh, and set it the background color to black. You should not do this. This should be done in CSS. I just did it to show you guys that D3 can do it. Um, beyond that, I'm using my data maps library to request a new data map. I'm going to ask for them to set it to the US attach it to the div with the map container ID. And then I'm setting a, a few other parameters, but the really nice one is this pop-up template. So this is the thing that uses the geo ID, which is something that data maps gives you, to show you which state it is. And then I'm using a function to find the median income for that state based on the geo ID that I get back. So that's how you have the two linked together. And then this is actually the most basic part of the entire thing. I set up some colors, all different shades of green. And then I'm going to loop through my data. 
With each time I loop, I'm going to pull out the current state. And that's going to be a class selector, which is why I have the dot appended to the beginning. And I'm going to use just this a bunch of if else statements to set the color based on the income bracket. Right? So that's going to set the color for each 50 state. And then on the bottom, I just have a, um, a resize method. That means when I resize the window, it'll look nice and pretty, and it won't get messed up. So that gave me this, which is honestly probably even easier to do than the circles example. Um, I also did this donut graph, which is not a great way to visualize this particular data because all the slices look exactly the same. But it just shows you you can visualize the same data in a myriad of ways, uh, depending on what you're looking to do. So that's what I wanted to show you guys with D3. I, oh, I lost my keynote. I hope you found it interesting. Um, I hope you can see some of the things you're going to be able to do. If uh, these are the libraries I used, if you're interested in using D3 with React, there are some people that have done it before. There's uh, reactd3.org. Uh, and if you're interested in data visualization as a whole, Udacity has a really interesting course on it. So thank you, guys.